All right, so we'll go back to the um, presentation now, the second part, and where I'm going to be looking at tests for binary or categorical data and also looking at correlation and regression. So have any of you already come across something called the chi-squared test? This is another very well-known test. I'm, I, I'm not quite sure whether there was somebody called Chi or where this name comes from, but it's known as the Chi-squared test, and sometimes there's an odd Greek symbol, which is a Chi, which is uh, used to denote the test. And so this is a test for comparing if you've got binary or categorical data, so you've got an outcome and something either happens or it doesn't happen or things fall into three or more categories, you can use something called a chi-squared test. And the chi-squared test <coughs> used to compare frequencies that say you've got an outcome, this is binary, three treatments and they either cure a set of cure a certain number of animals or they don't and we want to know if the cure rate's different between the three treatments. As I'll explain in a minute, a chi-squared test is most suitable for larger data sets, however it's often used even though it's not always the, the most appropriate test. But there is an alternative that's known as something called the Fisher's exact test and that's definitely named after a statistician called Fisher. And this works with the exact frequencies in each of these different cells. So you're never going to have to worry whether your data set's large enough to make the assumptions needed to do the test. Both tests can be either used to compare two groups with categorical or binary data, or also the equality of three different groups. But just as we saw for a hypothesis testing for continuous data, the null hypothesis is still going to be that there's no difference between the groups and the chi-squared test, or the Fisher's exact test, is going to seek to disprove that. So we'll look at this example. This is some SAS output, and you'll see that the table of these numbers of animals who were cured or not cured on each of the treatments, in the SAS output, it's repeating those numbers, although it's round the other way, no, it's coming before yes, for not cured and cured. So the way the chi-squared test works is it, first of all, predicts the number of animals it would expect to be cured under the null hypothesis. So if all the groups were the same, it is predicting that 20 out of the 32 animals, or 20.333 of the 32 animals, should be cured. And that's what you would expect under the null hypothesis. And for group A, then, that's approximately what happens. But group B, it's differing from um, what you would expect. There's fewer animals cured. And for group C, there's actually more animals cured than you might expect. But is that just by chance, or is there something going on there? Is, is the cure rate higher on group in group C? And that's what the chi-squared test evaluates. In the same way, it comes up with a test statistic, and which uh, is called the chi-squared statistic. Here it takes a value of 8 and it compares it against a distribution. Basically the chi-squared statistic has a distribution and at higher values are going to lead to smaller p-values. And our value of 8 happens to give this prob in the SAS output is actually the p-value for the chi-squared test and it's about 0 0.02 and it's significant. Just like the t-test and the f-test, the chi-squared test, if you're interested in knowing it has a degrees of freedom, which is used to define the correct chi-squared distribution to test the null hypothesis. And the degrees of freedom is going to be related to the number of groups you're comparing. So we're comparing three groups here. It's the number of rows in the table, minus one, multiplied by the number of columns, minus one. So here we've got three rows two columns, so it's going to be 3 minus 1 multiplied by 1. And I've done that in red because there's actually an error in the slides that you printed out. That should be 3 minus 1 multiplied by 1. I think the times 1 got missed out somehow. We've got a significant p-value. We've, we've proved that there's a difference between the three groups in terms of the cure rate. And if we did a Fisher's exact test, that works a bit differently. I won't go into the details, but it looks at every possible combination um, under the null hypothesis of this, these tables of frequencies and comes up with an exact p-value. In this case, it's very close to the chi-squared p-value. 
I said the chi-squared test is, is suitable for larger data sets. And the rule of thumb that people tend to use is they want at least a quarter of these expected numbers to be no more than a quarter to be less than five. And in our case, our data set is large enough and we find that all these expected numbers are greater than five. So we've got confidence that the chi-squared test is suitable. The Fisher's exact test isn't wrong, it's just either tests are, are suitable and we've got a bit of reassurance that the p-values are very similar, both showing significance. So we've shown that overall there's a difference between the three groups of treatments. Of course, just as we wanted to for a continuous data, you want to know which pairs of treatments are different. And there's not a special test for this. We can simply do a chi-squared test just taking the two groups that we want to compare. So if we wanted to look at A compared to B, we'd just do a chi-squared test based on the treatments A and B and that in fact comes up with a non-significant chi-squared test p-value and a non-significant Fisher's exact test p-value. So we've got no evidence that even though there are more animals cured on treatment A than B, that's not statistically significant. We haven't got enough data or power to show that. And here the degrees of freedom is now going to be basically 2 minus 1, 1 multiplied by 1, and we only have w 1 degree of freedom for the test. But don't worry too much about thinking about degrees of freedom, unless you want to do the test by hand, which you probably wouldn't do. And these are the other p-values for each of the pairs of comparisons between the treatments, and only one was significant. So we were only able to demonstrate that um, treatment B had a significantly lower cure rate than treatment C. So they were the most extreme rates in the data set and had a significant p-value. And having said I'd always put NS here, you probably would have been better. This is just for, so you can see what the actual p-values were. But if I was reporting that, I would put NS for these non-significant p-values.